This is KMAC Red Raider Nation's Countdown to Kickoff. Sponsored by Covenant Medical Group Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. All right, back here on Countdown to Kickoff. Texas Tech's defense hoping uh, to get better against a porous West Virginia offense today in Morgantown. Last time the Red Raiders were on a football field, they gave up four touchdowns of 32 yards or more. West Virginia's offense has four touchdowns of 32 yards or more all season long, but Texas Tech's depleted secondary certainly vulner vulnerable heading into this one. For more on that, let's bring in Eric Kelly once again live from Morgantown. Eric? Yeah, hey, David. It's a little warmer than it was maybe an hour ago, but still cold here in West Virginia. That's about a given when you go up north a little bit. And when you get into that kind of temperature, you get into the world of cramps, pulling, tweaking muscles. And the last thing Texas Tech can afford to have, especially on the defensive side, is injuries. And when it comes to a position group that's maybe most susceptible, it's that secondary decimated by injuries already this year. Even though some of those guys who were hurt and have left games are now back, you can still kind of see that there's a discombobulation uh, in that unit, giving up over 300 yards against Iowa State and over 400 yards against Kansas. So the last two games have not been good. And you can kind of tell when we talked to Keith Patterson earlier this week that he understands, but there's still some frustration that's creeping into his mindset. When it's just revolving doors, which it was from the Oklahoma State game to the Iowa State game to the Baylor game to the, it was a, every time you look up, it's different people out there. And I'm not going to make excuses. I, obviously, I'm accountable for all of it. Um, you know, but it is, it's, it's a little bit frustrating. And I, I think the Kansas game was just a culmination of all of it. That's why I tell people all the time you're one play away from being in the game. Uh, so, what you've done in your preparation up to that point is going to determine whether or not you're, you're prepared and ready to play. Obviously, continuity is the goal here in Morgantown today, but if you want some good news to take away from this, if there's a team you want to try to bounce back against when it comes to pass defense, it's this Mountaineer team. David talked about it uh, when he was tossing to me. Austin Kendall, only won 300 game this year passing-wise, and it came against the Texas Longhorns, and in that game, West Virginia picked up a loss. David? And time once again for our Covenant Injury Report. Dr. Courtney Cowden joining us once again. A couple of beat-up football teams. West Virginia with tons of injuries that we've talked about throughout the show today. Uh, on the Texas Tech side, at least some good news on the Allen Bowman and the quarterback front. Maybe not this week, but maybe in the near future, Matt Wells saying during Monday's pressure that he was getting x-rayed. Well, what you're looking for is uh, the signs that he's healing from whatever the injury is, which we still don't really know. Um, you know, if it's a fracture, you're looking for fracture healing. You're looking for uh, new bone growing in there. If it's a, a ligament sprain or strain, you're looking for any signs of displacement or motion, making sure everything's healing down where it's supposed to go. And if it looks good and it's uh, stable and it's not hurting anymore, then that's when you can start talking about going back to play. And some unfortunate news during the beginning of the game against Kansas, Evan Rambo goes down and just looking at the video, it seems something knee related. Uh, I guess take us through all the potentials there. Even though he did walk off the field, then it looked good when he walked off the field anyway. Yeah, he absolutely walked off the field under his own power. Didn't seem to have much of a limp. Um, so that was something that I would put in the uh, positive category. Uh, obviously, there's no telling what could be uh, messed up there. Um, but, you know, there's four kind of main stabilizing ligaments around the knee that we worry about. Most people have heard of an ACL tear. That's the one that uh, usually requires a pretty substantial surgery and a long recovery time. Um, there's also an MCL that's on the inside part of the knee that sometimes can be treated without surgery but still takes time to heal. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also the PCL and the posterior lateral corner, or the LCL, which are hurt less often. Um, but looking at the way he was hit there, I would worry most about either an ACL or an MCL uh, injury. Now he's one of the many guys for the Red Raiders on uh, Coach Wells' injury report that he had earlier this week. Hopefully we'll see him on the field later today against the Mountaineers. Dr. Cowden, as always, thank you very much. Thanks. All right, stick around. When we return, Eric and I give you what to watch for in today's game. But first, Jacob Riley joins us with the latest on the weather there in West Virginia.
Well, it's going to be one cold game for the Red Raiders. If you're out tailgating temperatures in the middle 20s, by the time kickoff rolls around up into the upper 30s, so we're going to keep those clouds around throughout the entirety of the game today. But it's definitely going to be a cold one by the halftime. Only 44 degrees, but by the time the game wraps up, we'll be in the middle to upper 40s across the region. So with that being said, it is going to be cold. We are going to see some winds out of the southwest around 5 to 10 miles an hour. That'll make it feel a little bit colder at times. But best of luck to the Red Raiders. Welcome deck.